Hello and welcome to Locusts and Wild Honey and the first of four weeks of preparing for a spring clean. As I'm preparing this video today it's a beautiful sunny day and the birds are singing and it's a real indication that spring is on its way. On the 1st of March this year the season of Lent begins in the church and the word Lent means springtime. It's an old English word that means spring or springtime. And that period of Lent is six weeks of reflection. We think about our spiritual life. We think about our life with God. But our spiritual life is nothing if it doesn't encompass the whole of our life. So as well as thinking about our spiritual life, thinking about our life with God, we can also think about our day-to-day -day life, whether or not that is working out how we would like it to work out. For instance, are we as happy as we would like to be, as happy as we could be? Is our work all that we would like it to be? Our, our, our relationships what we would want them to be or all they could be? Those are just one or two of the things that we can reflect upon on in this season of Lent. And there's a sense in which uh, Lent is uh, like a spring cleaning for our own personal life and for our, our own personal development, uh, body, mind and spirit. Now in the Eastern Orthodox Church, they have the similar period of Lent before Easter, but they spend five weeks preparing for it. And in each of those five weeks, they take one of the Gospel readings from the Bible and reflect upon that. And I'm going to do the same over the next four weeks as we prepare for Lent. And I'm going to use uh, as a foundation for that, and just as a, a, a guide, uh, a book written by a Russian Orthodox theologian, Alexander Schmemann, called Great Lent, which uh, that period of Lent is known by in the Orthodox Church. Now, in the first week, the reading from the Gospels that is taken is from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. And it's the reading about Zacchaeus's meeting with Jesus. Zacchaeus is a chief tax collector and he has a real desire to see Jesus as, as he hears that Jesus is coming to town. Now Zacchaeus is a, a, a man that's, who's short of stature and he realises that if he gets mixed up in the crowd he'll not be able to see Jesus very well. So the story tells us that he runs on ahead of the crowd and climbs up a tree so that he's got a better view of Jesus. As Jesus is walking along the road, he sees Zacchaeus up in the tree and says hello to him and says to Zacchaeus that he wants, him, wants to go and eat a meal with him in Zacchaeus' house that day. Now, the impact that Jesus has on Zacchaeus is so great that Zacchaeus says that he'll return all the money he's swindled out of people and that he'll sell half of his possessions and give the money to the poor. That was the result of the impact that Jesus had on Zacchaeus. Now Alexander Schwemann tells us that what, uh, what the main thing was there in that uh, story is the great desire that Zacchaeus had to see Jesus. A desire that was so great that he was prepared to overcome his limitations and in his case particularly his physical limitations that would prevent him from seeing Jesus, that would stand in the way of his fulfilling this great desire that he had, that he wanted fulfilled. And so we can ask ourselves what are the things that we most desire in our lives? And what are the things that are stopping us uh, having those desires fulfilled? doesn't matter what the desires are. Um, 
there are probably things that are limit, limiting our fulfilment of the desire that we have. The point that Alexander Schmerman makes within that too is that our desires of course have to be right desires. If we're prepared to go beyond uh, the things that limit us to have our desires fulfilled, no matter what they are, right or wrong, they'll be fulfilled. Uh, and there's a sense in which if our desire is great enough that, that, that whatever it is that we desire will actually come towards us and meet with us. But the point is uh, that we need to be sure that what it is that we desire is a right desire that will give us the right fulfilment, the right sense of meaning and purpose that is appropriate for our, our own life. And so in this first week, as we prepare for this time of Lent, this time of spring cleaning, we might think about what it is that we desire in our life. What are the, the things that we desire most out of our life? And what we have to do to have those desires fulfilled? And whether or not we are prepared to go beyond our perceived limitations to have those desires fulfilled. Thank you for watching. Please do remember to share this video if you're watching on Facebook or if you're watching on any other platform where you can share the video, please do share it and help us to spread the word. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.